everyone and welcome to part 14 of the order block strategy now in this part we're going to talk about volume now before i go anywhere the main thing you have to realize is i have not used volume for any of my trades that i've taken to this day and i still don't use it i'll explain why and i'll explain why i'm doing this video so the reason why I'm doing this video is because it's come up quite a lot in terms of, you know, why we don't use volume, uh, how can you use volume, and I'll give you guys an option should you wish to use it or not, uh, but I personally don't, okay? Um, the main reason why I don't, so with any indicator, okay, as far as, you know, most of us should be aware that any indicator that we use, uh, it lags, right? It's not true accuracy in terms of what's actually going on. And we're relying on volume to show, sort of show us where the buyers and sellers are, okay, in theory, where the buying pressure is, where the selling pressure is, right? How is, what I don't understand is, and the main reason why I don't like it is the fact that this, this volume is based on what this broker has collected in terms of data, okay? Now, in order to get true accuracy and too true accuracy in terms of volume, that broker would have to get data from every single broker to know where the buyers and sellers are. And I can't believe that, um, personally for me. So in that, with that being said, uh, I don't feel like, I don't feel too confident in using volume because of the accuracy. Again, I don't feel like it gives you a good indication. However, the way I'm going to show you how to use it is going to be so, it's going to be very generalized, but it can be quite effective if you are to use it as a confluence, should you wish to use it, okay? That's the key thing here, should you wish to use it. So the main thing to realize is with this course is I want you guys to, you know, try interpret what you can from it and try and make sense of everything that you've learned here, okay? And you can use whatever you wish in order, you, in order to, you know, give you that confidence or whatever confidence you want to use, it's completely up to you, okay? I'm clearly, I'm all I'm showing you is how I use, how I trade using this strategy and, you know, what I do to find the best, uh, higher probability trades and to trade with confidence. However, we'll get into this video um, and it's completely up, to, as I said, it's completely up to you should you wish to use it. However, the way we're going to use it is, the main thing we need to think about is divergence. Okay, you want to see if volume is supporting uh, price okay so what I mean by that is say for example volume is moving quite steadily right then we have an increase in volume okay and what I mean by that is you'll see a sharp rise in volume for example like this one uh, this one and so on right when this happens anything that happens after it right Hold on, let me get rid of those two circles there we go anything that happens afterwards is going to be a diminishment okay most likely okay most likely what do i mean by that if for example this is uh this is bearish volume right as we can see in this situation if this is bearish volume and what happens afterwards is if it's diminishment if price decides to do this if price is for example starts going like this okay in this situation with the volume diminishing in bearish volume and with a move that's moving bearishly, is that supported? Does the volume support the price? No, it doesn't. So it's sort of telling you, mate, there's something wrong here, okay? Something doesn't make sense, okay? There's no logic behind this move. So what is it potentially saying is prepare for something to happen in the market. Prepare for, for example, a change in trend. For example, it's not indicating that exactly. However, it's sort of telling you, you know, just be wary because something is, something's off in this situation. Okay, something doesn't seem right. Okay, just bear that in mind. It's the exact same thing for a bullish move. If price, for example, is moving bullishly and you have this bullish spike in volume and then you have a diminishment, but you still have that bullish move. Is that, does that make sense? No, it doesn't because there's no bullish volume to support this bullish move so it's sort of telling you okay be careful something may happen okay something may happen here for example as we can see here in this situation in this situation here uh, let me get rid of 
all of this. Uh, okay, in this situation that we can see, uh, let's just talk about this spike here. This is a random spike, okay? Now, this move, okay, yes, there's an increase in bullish volume. But then following this, there's a diminishment because of this spike that's happened. Yes, it's happened here again. I don't really know what was going on here, but it's happened here again. Um, now, the main thing to realize is there's going to be diminishment in bearish volume. So this, in bullish volume, sorry. So this move is true, okay? It's supported. However, because of this bearish move, there's no increase in bearish volume. So there's no support to for it, for price to go bearishly um, if that even if that's a if that's a word I don't know because there's no increase in bearish volume so this move is a little bit weird in that sense so it's basically telling you just be careful because something may happen in this situation when you get a spike in say for example you're in a bullish move and you get a spike in bullish trend yes you will get a diminishment but generally that happens when there's a pullback in this situation okay so just bear that in mind the main thing to take away from this is when price is approaching your POI so in this example here Okay, this is current market price at this point. What we can see is price is moving quite heavily to the bearish side, okay? And we have this huge spike. Now, for price to be supported by volume, we need to increase in bearish volume. We need price, we need volume to go like this for this move to be supported. So, with that being said, and by looking at price at the moment, is this move supported? No, it's not. Yes, we have like an increase, a small increase in bearish volume. However, it needs to break this to get to support that bearish move and that's not what's happening so what you need to think about is it's essentially it's basically saying you know be wary there could be a change in trend in this situation okay and that's essentially what we're looking for because we're looking to buy from here let's look at an example that's already played out now this example we've been talking about throughout this course anyway so in this situation what is going on okay so we basically let's talk about this move as it approaches your POI, which is here. Okay, we have this huge bullish move. Okay, and at this point you're probably thinking, oh, okay, momentum is very bullish at this situation. Okay, and if you were to look at a first glance, yes, you would think that. However, you need to bear in mind from from price to go from this high to this low to this high it was a lot quicker than coming from this high to this low. Okay, so just bear that in mind for momentum. However, we're not going to talk about momentum in this video. We need to think, is this volume, is this move supported? And the thing is, it's not. Because we have this spike in bearish volume, right? Which is here. Now, what happens next is the next candle that closes below. Look where that closed. If that was true bearish move, if that was a true bearish move, right? We would expect bearish volume to be up there. We would expect this to continue. But what happens is there is a diminishment. Okay, and that diminishment actually continues, obviously, as we can see here, as price continues to go bullish. So, with that being said, as price is approaching our POI, it doesn't make sense for price to continue in a bearish direction because there's no increase in bearish volume. Okay, so it's telling you basically that this move is not true. Okay, and that's essentially what happens, it's just, that's, and that's essentially how we are using it. Same with this situation here, right? So, in this situation, yes, we've got this increase in bearish volume. However, it's not enough to break that. It's still diminishment, okay, because of this spike. It's not enough bearish volume to, uh, you know, to support a true move. However, this move from here, from here to here, yes, that could be a true bearish move. Fair enough. Okay, because what we can see here is uh, probably it's like grab liquidity from this high and then continues. Okay, institutions may be active, I don't know. Okay, but it, it makes sense. It makes sense, this move. However, it's not strong enough to create a yield mass move to continue to the downside, right? Because there's no support. For it to happen, okay, we need a huge bearish move and to break that spike that was created because that, this spike has still not been broken and it's still a diminishment in this situation. Okay, so anything that happens bearish is not supported. So that's the main thing you need to think about in this situation. Um, let's look at an example. So I don't, I didn't really take any trades recently uh, for me to show you. And to be fair, markets have been quite quiet. But let's look at this situation. 
as price enters your POI here, what do we see? An increase in volume, okay? Now, anything that happens, now we're just gonna look at the gray part because that's my bearish volume because we're looking to go along. So we wanna see what's happening with bearish volume. And for bullish, we wanna see the opposite, okay? So in this situation, we have this increased spike in bearish volume. So what's that telling us? It's basically saying, mate, be careful, something may happen here. Okay, it's either going to continue to the downside. If it does, it's going to have to break that bearish volume or it's going, to it's going to go to the upside, okay? Okay, we don't know at this point. However, we know that if this price, if price is going to continue bearish, we need to keep breaking this high. However, what's happening? It's struggling. It's struggling. There's a diminishment in volume. So for us to take a long, we have full confidence that there's no bearish volume in this market for this to happen. Yes, there could be an increase further later on. Fair enough, there would be, um, and there probably was, I don't know. But in this situation, as price enters your POI, you generally see a spike in volume, and then you can sort of follow price and see if that volume is supporting. So that's essentially it. In terms of volume, you basically want to see when price enters your POI, you want to see basically a spike. Whenever you see a spike, you basically expect a diminishment. Expect that, okay? If price is going to be a supported true move, you should have a steady increase in volume, okay? That's what you should see. For example, as you see, like a, a volume that's going on here in terms of bullish. Like this move, okay, let's look at this move here from here to here, right? This is a steady, well, I would say steady, but it's an increase in, very, in, increase in bullish volume, increase in bullish move, okay? Makes sense, full logic. However, remember what I said, when you get a spike, you'll get a diminishment in uh, bullish volume, and that's essentially what's happening. So this is all true. This is true. However, for this to be a true bearish move, there needs to be a full increase in bearish volume. However, we don't really have that because the bullish volume is still... Um, there's still more uh, bullish volume in this situation, okay? And we're probably still having a diminishment in terms of the bearish volume overall. I mean, if you look from here, bearish volume is still diminishing, okay? But, and it makes sense because we're in a bullish market, so bearish volume, is you should expect it to be diminishing, okay? So if you're looking for a bullish move, you wanna see a diminishment in bearish volume. If you're looking for a, uh, if you're looking for a bearish move, you want to see a diminishment in um, in bullish volume. Let me try find an example. Um, I think I should get one set. I think there's a short on this pair. I'm not sure. Oh, sorry. Uh, I think there's a short. What was there? Um, bear with me. Hmm. Okay, uh, let's go to this example. Let's just check here, for example. Um, no, that doesn't make sense. Uh, I wanna find a clear example for you guys. Oh, gosh, why have I done that? Sorry. Apologies. Oh, no. Apologies, I didn't mean to do that. Let's add this back on. There we go. Okay, so let's look at this for example. So we're overall in a uh, we're overall in a bullish move. Okay. Now let's look at uh, let's see what's happening here. So in this situation, we had I don't know what I marked up here to be honest, but I'm not going to explain entries in this situation because you should have already understood uh, understood entries. We just want to see if this is supported um, there we go apologies took so long to to get here okay so um let's see what's happening here all right so we're going to follow our two rules in this situation okay we have an impulse successful retrace and so on okay price continues to break now we basically want to see is if price is supporting uh the move okay if volume is supporting price. And essentially what we can see here, now this is quite subtle, this one, but we can see a spike in, sorry, we can see a spike in bullish volume, okay? And when that happens, we know there's gonna be a diminishment in bullish volume, okay? What's that telling us? That any bullish move that we have is not true in this situation. So this move here that we have, this whole bullish move, 
it won't make sense because if it does if it if it was to make sense we should have an increase in bullish volume but that's not what's happening there's still a diminishment so we've had that spike as prices into this poi okay so it makes sense for us to start looking for shorts in this situation okay and this is essentially what you do when you come to your entries is you want to see is you, all you want to look for is a spike and see whether price supports it or not okay so in this situation for this for these moves to be true bullish moves okay because these are just literally these are just pullbacks in this situation it's not the cleanest price action in here to be honest um that okay that looks better to be fair that looks better so but the volume there's no real spike in this situation it's kind of it's a bit more subtle um okay actually i'll go back to the one minute uh let's go to here okay so essentially you want to see that is volume supporting price and if it is then fair enough that's a true move okay if it's not however then it's fair enough for you to uh, think that something is wrong in the market something is happening let's have a look at this bullish spike this bearish spike that's happened here there's a spike in bearish volume right and let's see what's actually happened we had a break of structure here so in this situation and ignore the time frame ignore the overall bias in this, in this situation we're just going to follow volume we have this uh where's the, where's the recent high is going to be here okay impulse and successful retrace fair enough okay we can look for a long in this situation is that supported yes because price let's look at the next candle so this one then this one generally when it's when you get a bigger pullback it gives you more sense but in this situation that bearish move that pullback is not supported so if you were to look for a long from here it would make sense why because this pullback does not make sense okay it's got no this is just a pullback it's got no it's not a true bearish move but like this one here what we can see is a bearish move here increase in bearish volume and let's see does it does it carry on does it take over yes it does because if we see here increase in bearish volume and it overtakes that spike that's happened so this bearish move is supported it makes sense so if you were to look for a counter trend in this situation here it will make sense because when you get a spike okay the next candle for it to be a true bearish move this volume would have to be would have to surpass it however that's not what's happened okay it's closed below so this move does not make sense so if you were to look for a long in the situation you have full confidence and confluence to take it. So that's essentially it with volume. There isn't really much more to it. Okay, you just want to look for the. So all you want to look for is uh, you want to look for a spike in volume, and then expect. Okay, that's the main thing. Expect a diminishment. Okay, and then let's say that this is bearish volume. Okay, spike in bearish volume. If price is moving bearishly, it doesn't make sense okay it does not make sense okay when you get a spike into your poi just be wary that something may happen okay same thing for bullish okay exactly the same thing in a bullish situation you want to look for this but if you get a spike in, in bullish volume and you have a still a bullish continuation move it doesn't make sense so be aware be alert and be aware that something may happen in this situation now again what i want to finish off with is it's completely up to you should you wish to use volume or not as mentioned i don't use volume myself and i haven't done until i haven't done to this date and i still don't okay but this is just a confluence should you wish to use it okay should you wish to use it so what i suggest doing if you want to use it go ahead and back test your entries and see you know it could give you that confluence and confidence behind taking certain trades and so on you know some of you may like it uh, but just bear in mind that there is a lag with volume and it's not accurate okay just bear that in mind however it does give you a generalized idea of volume and whether price is supporting volume or not okay so just bear that in mind but for now uh for now i'll leave you guys be and i hope that you guys enjoy this video